Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. This is the second tutorial in our series of Java tutorials for complete beginners. And today we're going to look at variables in Java. Uh, don't worry if you don't understand every, absolutely every single last thing in this tutorial, uh, because learning a programming language is like learning an ordinary language, and you just have to practice it and gradually it sort of sinks into your head. Um, I'm going to use the Hello World program from the last tutorial as, as a starting point here. So what is a variable? I'll give you an example. Um, I'm going to type int and I'm going to make up a name here, my number. Uh, variables are like boxes um, that you can um, put values in and we've got different sizes of boxes in Java that can hold different kinds of things, different types of boxes, I should say. And what we've done here is I've made up a name, my number, uh, and notice I've given it a lowercase initial letter, but I've capitalized um, the second word of it. And um, that's, that's a sort of a convention in Java. And my number is of type int, which means integer, meaning that this box can hold a an integral number, um, a whole number, in other words, negative or positive. Um, so here I've I've created the box and we say I've declared the variable and I can now put a value into the box. Um, I can say my number equals 88 or whatever and I'm now initialising the variable. So I've declared the variable here, now I'm initializing the variable. And I can output this by the same method that we used in the first tutorial. I'll type sysout, I'll press control space and eclipse creates this system.out.println, print line for me. And I just put my number in there. And if I click the green run button, it outputs 88. Now here I've I've declared I've declared and initialized the variable in two separate steps, but I can declare it and initialize it at the same time. Um, I can say equals 88 up here. I can get rid of this line. And that does just the same thing. Now in Java, there are eight primitive types of variables. And um, we're going to go through these really quickly. And then in the next tutorial, we'll look at uh, classes a little bit, classes and objects. So we've got um, an int here. Um, an int is a 32-bit value in Java. If you don't really know what that means, don't worry, it doesn't really matter. Basically, if you want um, an integral number, a whole number, then use an int usually. Um, sometimes you'll see short, which is for um, uh, well, it's a 16-bit value, so it can hold slightly smaller numbers. Um, but still, you can fit quite a lot into it, probably up to, I don't know, maybe 32,000, I think. Um, and we can output that the same way. Sys out my short. And um, there's also a long version of an int for really long numbers, my long. And these, these names here, by the way, could be anything. I could call these Apple Cat, you know, a, a, absolutely anything at all. So I'm just making up names for the variables. Um, let's output that. Sys out, sys out my long. This is a 64-bit value for really big numbers. You can put a lot, a lot bigger numbers than, than this in there. It's also, what if you want a floating point number? You usually use a double. This uh, means kind of double precision, e extra precision sort of thing. So I can put like, you know, some, some number in there. Um, sys out my double. Hey presto. And there's there's no long version of double, but there is a short version called float. And there's um slight complication here, which is if you type a floating point number in in Java like this, um, by default it's a double. 
Um, so you have to put an F on the end of it to get a float. Um, but these doubles and ints are the most commonly used values here. Um, my float, the other's a bit less common. In, in, addition, in addition to these five, um, there's also three other rather interesting types. There's a char type, which can hold a Unicode character. Um, and you can specify a character by putting it in single quotes like this. So you, it could be any character on your keyboard. I'll just put Y. Um, uh, as I say, that's that's Unicode, so it's 16-bit. Unicode just means you can represent basically a whole bunch of crazy characters using this. Um, there's a very useful Boolean type, which I guess, I guess is named after, I think it was George Boole, or possibly Boulos, I'm not sure. Um, who invented Boolean logic, um, and this can just hold true or false. Um, is this out my Boolean? True. Or I could change that to false, and that's all you can put in that. And finally, we've got the byte type which can hold just 8 bits of data. So it's a number, negative or positive, but it's, it can only go up to about 127, I think. Um, and often that's quite useful, because sometimes you want to represent a whole load of data by an array of bytes. And um, you can use this, and you know precisely how much space it will take up. OK. So we just that's it for declaring boxes and shoving stuff into them. Um, in the next tutorial, we'll we will look at some non-primitive types, um, classes, and objects. Um, so uh, don't forget, there's more info and tutorials on caveofprogramming.com, and I'll catch you next time, I hope. And until then, happy coding.